other letter writers talk about monopolies as though monopolies are intrinsically evil and motivated only by corporate greed and excessive profits. Um, such correspondence tells me that that um, these folks don't understand why we have power monopolies. So I'm just going to be, I'll be brief here, but due to the high cost of building and maintaining the grid, electricity transmission and distribution can only be done by companies with investors willing to invest millions of dollars without a guarantee of a rate of return. It's reasonable to assume that such investors are more likely to invest if they are not facing a hostile regulatory environment. So the deal that has been struck is energy utilities are granted monopoly control over a local market and then mandated by the government to provide affordable, reliable energy, a reasonable level of service at a fair price. Our job at the Public Service Commission, it, our job is to enforce that mandate. You know, nobody likes to pay more for utilities, including us commissioners, but sometimes it's necessary to increase rates in order to fulfill our goal to keep the lights on, the furnaces warm, and the air conditioners doing their job. The content of the consumer letters is understandable and also reasonable insofar as they misunderstand the rate case process and the public service commissioner's job. I know of at least three reasons that consumers don't understand the process. One, they base their opinion on information received from Montana newspapers. Two, we at the PSC haven't explained the process adequately to the public, though I think Grant did today. And number three, and most important reason for misunderstanding is that the process is extremely complex. I did not begin to understand it until I took a revenue requirement class two weeks into my job as public service commissioner this year. I'm very fortunate I was able to take this class from one of our esteemed staff members, a nationally known instructor, before his upcoming retirement. The fact that rate cases are not simple is demonstrated by the fact that there are rate school classes that last days to weeks. PSC staff and commissioners work diligently to, as best as possible, ensure affordable, reliable energy for ratepayers. While it is the PSC's job to hold the utility's feet to the fire within legal constraints and reasonable parameters, we do not do this alone. When the MCC intervenes in these cases, the law requires the PSC to leave the representation of consumers' interest to the MCC. In this case, MCC has agreed that the settlement strikes an appropriate balance between consumer interests and the utilities' interests. So while we commissioners are not given the constitutional authority to be consumer advocates, it is our job to evaluate whether the MCC, Denbury, and MDU struck a reasonable balance here. Rate of return regulation for natural monopolies like energy utilities has been around since the 1800s. And, util and currently utilizes a specific equation for revenue requirements. Approving or disapproving a rate increase requires sophisticated and thorough analysis of thousands of pages of data. And those pages include graphs and tables. Revenue requirements, again, are based on a formula, an equation that includes for the utility their operating expenses, taxes, and capital costs of assets. Capital costs include expense, include depreciation expense, plus the utility is required, is entitled to the recovery of and return on its investments. Considering that energy utility companies provide services needed for basic comforts and even survival for its ratepayers, it should be fairly obvious they be given reasonable opportunity to recover prudently incurred costs. Under rate of return regulation, both prices, which are rates, and profits, which is rate of return, are closely regulated. PSC staff in their analysis is not given the task of determining reasonableness based on whether they agree or disagree with the general philosophy of the utility company. Their task is to assess if the rate increase as stated in the stipulation as a whole falls within a range of reasonableness. In other words, answering the question, is the rev revenue requirement reasonable? The give and take of MDU, MCC, and Denbury that allowed them to come to this agreement is laid bare in the settlement and further broken down by our staff in their detailed explanations as to why they are recommending we accept the settlement. And I'm going to vote yes. You might have guessed. I hope I've been helpful in my attempt to scratch the surface of the complex process that we take very seriously here. To act in the public best interests 
a public service commissioner should neither rubber stamp an agreement, nor should they pander to uninformed public pressure. Making a decision in the public interest involves weighing the evidence, which in this case supports approving the settlement. Thank you for your indulgence. All right, I have some questions for staff. Uh, and then I'll make my remarks in this case. <clears throat> so, whichever staff wants to jump in first, then feel free to do so. So, <clears throat> staff, if the commission today were to approve the MDU settlement that we're presently discussing, <clears throat> MDU would be authorized to collect an overall base revenue requirement increase of six point one million for electric service in Montana. Correct? Yes, President Brown, that's correct. Okay, so keeping that six point one million figure in mind, <clears throat> how much of that six point one min million figure is attributable attributable to property tax? Tracker or increases. President Brown, commissioners, approximately two million of that is attributable to it. So essentially one third of the requested increase is will go to paying for property tax increases, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So can the staff elucidate not only the commissioners but the public on what authority the commission has or doesn't have to approve utilities requests to recoup or recover, if you will, property tax payments made. Touch on that matter, then hand it over to Lucas for further discussion. But um, it's Montana statute that the property taxes are passed through to Montana ratepayers, and the property tax base gets updated in rate cases like here today. And um, as we've seen, property taxes have increased. And so this increase in property taxes was a result of that, and it'll get passed through to ratepayers. So to confirm, what you're saying is, is the Montana legislature has made a legislative decision, with, which is certainly within their constitutional purview, to authorize utility companies to pass the costs of property taxes directly on to ratepayers. Yes, President Brown, that's correct. And we have very limited authority to approve, to disapprove of those increases, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. <clears throat> so, in theory, what we're really acting on is around a $4 million increase, given that we've been handcuffed by the legislature, correct? Correct. All right. All right, so of the remaining $4 million, the parties to this matter have done a, as part of the stipulation a revenue requirement that includes $1.2 million of revenue that would be attributable to annual amortization and return related to retired, retired coal plant deferrals, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. So... <clears throat> As I understand it, the coal plants have been retired at this time, correct? Yes, President Brown, that's correct. And the commission doesn't have the authority to order MDU to reopen a coal plant, doesn't they close coal plant, does it not? Correct. They, we do not. Okay. So I appreciate my colleagues' concerns about the prudency of those decisions. But then let me ask you this question, and any of you can answer. So <clears throat> when a regulated utility comes to the commission and files a rate case, it's my understanding that under Montana law, this is what's called a MAPA proceeding. Are you familiar with that term? And maybe, Mr. Hamilton, you should take the series of questions. I'd be happy to, Mr. President. Yes, it's a proceeding conducted under the Montana Administrative Procedures Act, or MAPA. And, Mr. Hamilton, it's my understanding that under a MAPA proceeding, we as the commission are basing our decisions based on evidence that is presented 
to the commission, correct? That's correct. The commission's decision must be based on record evidence. All right. So with that in mind, have the parties to the stipulation filed papers or documentation that would otherwise support what has been agreed to as part of the stipulation? Mr. President and commissioners, the parties reserve the right in the stipulation to return to their original positions if uh, the commission were to disapprove of the settlement agreement. The parties have agreed, however, for the purposes of the settlement agreement that the $1.2 million in annual revenue requirement is a reasonable resolution of that issue at this time, preserving several key issues for uh, a later rate case. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so colleagues, the purpose of me ask, asking these series of questions is to clarify the pub, for the public that a portion of this rate increase, um, we don't have the power to disapprove. Uh, second thing is, is that our decisions, as I've tried to make clear multiple times uh, during these commissions hearing has to be, be based basically on the record evidence before us. I mean, certainly we have some discretion to determine whether or not something is in the interests uh, of the public. Um, but at the same time, we have obligations under law to ensure that uh, not only uh, are the regulated utilities able to operate in a manner that keeps them viable, or as Commissioner Bukacek stated, keeps the lights on, but also we have an obligation to listen to the constitutionally created office of the Consumer Council, which the drafters of the 1972 Constitution specifically identified the, con the Consumer Council as the ratepayers' advocate. So these are the terms that we're working under when we consider this. Now, that being said, um, I do think Commissioner O'Donnell raises one fair point in terms of what we're tasked with looking at. And I think Commissioner O'Donnell is correct that the one concerning part of this agreement is the $1.2 million that has been requested by M MDU for the amortization uh, related to the retired coal plants. And the reason that's concerning is, is that <clears throat> the stipulation doesn't have a starting balance for how that amortization will occur. It doesn't have a defined time period for the amortization period. And it doesn't define what the carrying costs are for the amortization. Now, if you know anything about counting, and particularly regulatory accounting, those are all very concerning factors for the commission because we're being asked to essentially trust MDU as to what the figures are. But, and this is now a question for staff, <clears throat> if we're to approve a settlement agreement, that is not the end, if you will of the amortization question, correct? Because it's my understanding that at some point, MDU is going to have to come back to the commission and basically, basically justify how it treated the retirement of the coal plants. Is that correct, Mr. Hamilton? Mr. President, uh, that is correct. Uh, the, the utility will have to come back to the commission in order to eventually set a balance for that amortization an amortization period and the, and the carrying costs associated. Those issues are merely reserved for a future case. And not, I appreciate it that staff doesn't want to deal in speculation, but it seems to me because the parties have agreed um, not to deal with, if you will, uh, the costs re related to Heskett 4, that MDU is going to have to come back before this commission at some point if it wants to recover costs associated with Heskett 4, correct? Mr. President, that is correct. All right. All right. Let me speak to my motion. 
Uh, colleagues, I appreciate the great conversation t today. I have allowed a little leeway, if you will, to allow commissioners to make multiple comments on this matter because this is a matter of great con consequence uh, to the state of Montana and to uh, the constituencies of uh, several of my colleagues and certainly um, to the ratepayers uh, of MDU. And so I, I think it, this matter deserves fair and full discussion. And I appreciate the civility that uh, my colleagues have shown in discussing this matter. As you can imagine, since I made the motion to adopt the settlement proposal filed in this matter, I will be supporting it. I agree with comments made by all my colleagues today that there isn't a member of this commission who, do, who does not take seriously any proposal that may, may result in a rate increase for consumers as this proposal does. <clears throat> But as stated, our responsibility as PSC commissioners is to ensure that rates are just and reasonable, and such responsibility is particularly solemn at a time, such as now when cost of living is increasing for Montanans across the Treasurer State and inflation rates are running high. <clears throat> as we heard during the listening sessions held on MDU's application, circumstances are clearly putting a strain on hardworking Montana families. And it's important to keep that in mind, <clears throat> but it's also important for the public to understand that our job at the PSC is to balance the interests of rate pairs with, with the public need to ensure that utilities that provide services are in a financial position to continue to doing so. Uh, I think the events um, of Texas in 2001 inform us on in the importance of having utilities that are able to meet demand at times when demand is most in need. The law requires that we as the PSC do not approve rates that are unjustly too high or, as the public may not, not realize, are unjustly too low. I believe this is the circumstance we find ourselves in now, where rejecting the settlement may result in long-term challenges for MDU to continue to provide safe and reliable services to its Montana customers. As already noted by staff, MDU's originally filed application in this matter requested an annual electric revenue increase of roughly 10.45 million, it requested a return on equity of 10.5%, and an overall rate of return of roughly 7.52%. Company in support of its application provided documentation in support of these figures, citing among the factors necessitating a rate increase as the following. Rising property taxes, as we discussed, additional investments made by the company and in infrastructure needed to adequately serve its customers now and into the future, and increased operating and maintenance expenditures in this era of rising costs, which all of us are very familiar with. And as my colleagues know, and as we've discussed, the Montana Consumer Council intervened in this matter on behalf of MDU's ratepayers. Earlier this year, after the parties to this matter engaged in lengthy discovery, the commission was presented with a mutually agreed upon settlement, a settlement that has been signed off by all three parties to the existing document. And what numbers do we have before us for decision? Stipulated settlement revenue requirement is some 4 million below the original request, as we discussed. The ROA, ROE is stipulated 9.65, which is down from the originally requested 10.5%. And if you read through the <clears throat> stipulation filing, you'll pretty much see that all aspects of the application as originally filed have been reduced in favor of the ratepayer as a result of the settlement before us. That's just a fact. Turning now to the specifics of the specifics of the stipulated revenue requirement of 61.1 million, as staff answered. And as the public needs to be aware of that, 6.1 million, 2 million is directly attributable to Montana property tax increases. To state that another way, one third of the rate increase, if approved, is to pay for property taxes. Increased property taxes, I'll bet that sounds familiar to all those that are listening and watching this afternoon. To this end, the public needs to be aware that the Montana legislature has enacted legislation that prohibits the commission from disapproving rate increases used to cover Montana property taxes so long as those property tax payments were reasonably incurred. So my admonition to those listening, if you have a problem with how the property tax structure is in the state of Montana, that's a legislative issue. 
As to the remaining $4 million, as you heard from PSC staff, the Commission uses several well-established regulatory mechanisms for determining whether a rate increase is reasonable and just. And as explained by staff, the numbers contained in the settlement are well-documented and are within a range deemed reasonable by staff analysis, with the high end of reasonableness sitting at roughly $9.3 million, with an ROE of 10.10%, considering current market conditions and the comparable rate of standards established by the Supreme Court cases that were mentioned earlier. Further, should the settlement be adopted, MDU's customers will see no increases in the basic service charges for residential, small general service, irrigation, and space heating. In turn, large general service, municipal pumping, and contract service customers do see an increase in the basic service charge. Therefore, in my opinion, any concern the commission may have about rate shock for residential customers is mitigated to the best that we can do. I do recognize the concerns of Commissioner Pinochi as to the impact that MDU's business decisions have made on residents of Sydney and those folks living across the Eastern state, part of the state. <clears throat> I'm certainly aware that the devastation of the economy to Sydney by the closure of Sydney Sugars, but again, we're not a policy making body in these rate making cases. Our job is to ensure what has been brought before us <clears throat> uh, is supported by record evidence. Um, again, I'm not thrilled with how the settlement treats the amortization and return related to the retired coal plants. I, I must confess that that issue alone made it difficult for me to support this settlement, but I believe it is in the best interests of um, both MDU and MDU's customers to approve this settlement. Further, given the fact that the rate payers advocate MCC has signed off on the settlement and requested that the commission approve it on behalf of MDU's customer, customers, I do agree with staff's recommendation that the stipulation provides it, MDU with a reasonable opportunity to recover its prudently incurred costs. It's not an outcome that any of us would hope, you have rate increases come at a time when families are suffering from increased costs everywhere else uh, in their lives. But this is the situation before us, and the evidence points to adopting and supporting the settlement agreement, and I will do so. Thank you, colleagues.